name's Bill Freeman. I'm an assistant professor of pharmacology. Potential outcome is that we would have a diagnostic test. Challenge in alcohol abuse as opposed to substance abuse, things like cocaine or heroin or PCP, you know, alcohol is a, a perfectly legal substance for those over 21. And so you can't, unlike testing that's very routine for illicit drugs, you just look for any trace of the drug. It doesn't work so well for alcohol because many people uh, enjoy a drink in a responsible manner. Our approach was to start with uh, doing this, this discovery work, this discovery proteomics in the non-human primate to identify a set of proteins that we could look at in the blood and say, um, this is from someone who doesn't drink, someone who drinks responsibly, someone who drinks too much. If we take the monkeys that don't drink at all and we see some proteins uh, go up in, in le their levels or go down in their levels very quickly with you know one or two drinks a day. And then they, they go up or down to some level and that level stays pretty much the same no matter how much they drink. We see other proteins that, that don't, you know, don't really change in their, their levels, whether you don't drink or drink a little bit, but they change when you, when you drink a whole lot. And so that's what allows us to um, classify into these three groups. The potential outcome is that we would have a diagnostic test where if there's a situation where you really need to be sure that somebody uh, doesn't have a drinking problem, and this test could be applied in those circumstances to say, um, yes, this person you know, either doesn't drink or drinks in a, in a normal fashion, or, well, this person actually drinks very heavily. I mean, you know, we're talking things like six drinks a day or more, day in, day out. And so we continue to research here at Penn State to add more proteins, potential proteins, for inclusion on that list. So if we take, as we take things forward, uh, ones that don't work out in the humans, we have others that might be able to replace it. We're working with several different groups to see if we can set up a study to take blood from people on admission to an inpatient uh, substance abuse treatment facility and then collect blood from them over the course of that month or two months that they're inpatients and to see if uh, we go from a pattern that's indicative of excessive drinking to a pattern that's indicative of not drinking. Uh, since we can't do the opposite experiment. We can't take people who don't drink or drink, drink acceptably and make them drink too much. Uh, that's obviously not, would not be appropriate. So we're, we're doing it in the opposite order.